Um, okay, um, today I'm going, I'm going to be showing you guys how to. Uh, let me just. I'm going to be showing you guys a breakdown of how I created this texture inside of Photoshop. So uh, it's more like a walkthrough, more like a walkthrough. So I won't be doing this from scratch actually, but uh, I'll be showing you a walkthrough of the different layers of unpainted textures and procedural textures that I added to give this a realistic dark skin textures. So but before I begin, I'd like to give you guys some tip on how I started um, picking out references on now for this particular for this particular model. So I'll start by um, so I'm going to be showing you guys how I look for reference images for this to create my textures. So it was quite challenging, but once you understand the basic concepts behind painting skin textures, and then you start. So at some point you kind of figure out the workflow and it becomes a bit much easier for you. So I'm going to going to um, my browser. So initially I was looking for dark skin textures, like textures without um, without um, light information on it, just the pure albedo textures. And um, 3D scan stores. A good um, library for quite very very realistic um, head models with realistic skin pores and alpha maps and um, textures too. Everything you need actually. But I was kind of challenging myself to create um, a tasking texture from scratch without using external maps to make the work a bit a bit a bit easier for me. So I was trying to learn exactly. Um, how to create textures from scratch. So I went to 3D scan, scan, um, scan store to look for dark skin textures. So under the uh, texture packs of female, so I found some dark skin textures to use, to use something like this. So I downloaded a few, downloaded a few to use, and I kind of brought them into my uh, pure ref and bring that up bring up my pure ref so my pure ref i have other references too that i use for for working for creating textures let me just put this on top let me put this on top okay so if i should um, let me maximize this let me make this more obvious. So I have a lot of reference images, and these are a few I got from uh, 3D Scan store. And then there's one, there's one stuff I usually do to kind of enhance the images to make it to make it look more defined in a way in a way for me to kind of understand and see areas whereby I need to texture properly. I'm basically, I'm just kind of enhancing the image to kind of make the spots pop out properly. So I'll show you. I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about right now. So going to this scan store, I would um, let me look for a dark skin. Okay. Uh, let me use. Let me use this. So I would. Um, I'll save this image. Just save it to save it to my desktop. Okay. Let me shrink this. So it's just a little, just a little, a little trick. It might be helpful for you in your projects also. So back in uh, Photoshop, I'll create a new document. Okay, let me just. I'll just basically drag the image in here. Desktop, yeah, this is it. I'll drag and drop this in here. 
Okay, so now I have this. Let me close this. I don't need this. Close. Okay. So let me unlock the background. Zoom in. Uh, so I'm going to convert this into a smart object. Then I'll go into um, filter, um, camera roll filter. So as you can see now, the textures are looking kind of plain. You can hardly see, though, though it's kind of clear though, for a preview image, it's kind of clear. Let me just zoom in. Some around this should be fine. Let me put this back in. Okay. So you can kind of see the details there, but they're not actually popping out the way I would want them to. So, so to kind of enhance this image, I would just go to my uh, go to clarity. You kind of push this all the way. And increase the contrast also. Uh, raise this a bit more. Now I can see some of the details coming out. I'll click OK on this. So um, after that, let me undo that. So after that, there's still one last thing I need to do to this image. So I so I add the details a bit more. I will go to image adjustments and I'll go to Asia right coming. I'll click yes. Uh, to take this down, take this down, okay. Then I will just increase the details. So that's a bit too much. Let me back, let me back up and back out a bit more. So as you can see now, the skin details are kind of a bit more enhanced now. Can have like a general idea of areas to kind of paint in the dark spots are kind of popping out, and as you can see, this region around the eyes, this dark region around the eyes, now it has become more obvious to see and for it kind of paints paints out. Uh, what else? Let me take this down a bit. If I increase the vibrance, something like this. So now let me click OK on this. Now if I zoom in, you can see like a variation of of details kind of coming out from the image. You can see, you can see some whitish spot around the image. You can see this darker tone. You can see the discoloration between the eyebrow, this region of the eyebrow, and the cheeks, and this cheek region down here. And see another discoloration around the ear. Now, now this, this, now doing this kind of gives me a good idea of how to pick, pick out my colors to kind of texture my, my, my character with the dark, with the dark skin texture. So as soon as I'm done with this, I'll save, I'll, I'll, I save this out and I drag this and drop this into my, um, into my uh, ref and that is why I have maps like this. The details enhanced to enable me pick out the, the textures more properly as I should. As you can see. Uh, so let me just control A, control A, control copy, and I'll just paste this in here. So I have something like this in here. So it gives me a good idea of how to pick out my colors 
So it makes it much easier for me to kind of pick colors and just paint them in however way I want. So that's, so that's just a little, a little tip just to keep at the back of your mind. I don't know if, if, it, if it might be useful, useful for you, but if it is, that's great. Because it is, it is very, very useful for me. So um, let's jump right into Substance Painter. Okay. So now, like a, a, general, a general rule of thumb, so let me just um, explain something down here. Need to increase this a bit more. So, uh, let's say you're working on, let's say you're working on um, a, a white skin tone. A white skin tone. Now, there, there are regions of the face that you need to take into account like for example as you can see this is the base tone and then you get some kind of yellowish tone around the forehead and a bit more reddish tone around the cheek zone and a bluish tone or almost grayish tone or yes a bluish or almost grayish tone around this region of the face now for a male for a, for a male for a male and for female also you can tell that um <laughs> You see this kind of discrimination around the corners of the um, of the cheek or the jaw because of hairs growing in that particular region or constant sh constant shaving of the hair in that particular region. So you get some kind of discrimination like this, a greyish or bluish tone around that region. Then around the nose, there are more blood vessels down here. That's where you have these more reddish tones. Where you have more reddish tones gives you an idea of where there are more blood vessels in there and on the forehead the forehead is kind of closer to the bone there are less blood vessels in there and that's why you have this kind of yellowish tone around there so keep keeping 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 into account of all these regions of the face in relation to blood vessels and the closeness of the bone to that particular region of the skin and discoloration based and discoloration based on continuous shaving on that part of the of, of the of, of, of the jaw, then obviously the pinkness of the lips also. So taking that into account and then just painting those colors in there and blending them in properly, you get and you get a good realistic realistic and skin tone on your model. So you have another example down here also. Another example down here. Another example down here, but. You need to bear in mind that you don't just paint a single color overall in the entire thing. You need to kind of create that variation of tones in those colors. For example, now if you have a yellowish tone, so that yellowish tone should, should, should kind of have some saturation and some desaturation also to kind of blend blend the values back in together. Same with the orange and yellowish tone. As you can see, you have some blends of different tones that kind of mix up the entire skin tone to make it look more realistic. Because obviously you're not using the, the human skin tone has a lot of details in it, so keeping that into account. As you can see now they just now you just have um, some patches of yellow yellow some yellow some patches of yellowish tone and reddish tone and a bit of bluish tone on the forehead and and, and, and more reddish tone around the cheek region and the nose and more bluish tone around these areas of the jaw. And so on and so forth. So that gives you like a base or a foundation to kind of work with and paint your skin tones on that. So I kind of follow that concept to kind of create my skin tone. So you can use the same concept both both for dark skin tone and white skin tone, depending on the ethnicity of your 3D model or the kind of character you're, you're trying to recreate. So you need to always keep that in mind. So uh, let's jump right into Sultan's Painter and do a breakdown of every single layer that I've created to kind of get this um, skin tone in. Oh, also you have to keep in mind that, um, bear in mind also that for you to have a, a realistic result for your skin texturing, there are a lot of stops that still goes in even before you use that texturing. Like for example, your skin tones. I mean, sorry, rather your skin pores, rather your skin pores. 
skin pores on your model it needs to be in there because when you want to bake in um, when you when, when you're baking in your when you're baking in your um, uh, your curvature map or your maps in um, in substance painter it needs it obviously needs all this skin pores baked in to kind of use later on to kind of make your skin texture look more enhanced and more realistic so i'm going to um, go down here and turn off i think yeah, let me turn off oh this needs to be, i need to take this down this was not the original so not the original value that was in there let me take this down So it should should load up properly. Yes, yeah, loading up. Since that value was down. Okay, yeah, much better. Let me just keep this here. So let me scroll down. Okay, but let me just let me drag this out. Let me drag this out, right? And let me drag this out. Oh. Uh, let me create more space. Okay, let me just okay, let me just bring this back in. Okay, uh, okay. So now let me turn off every single layer in here. So just click and drag. Um, let me turn off every single layer in here. Okay. Once you once your foundation is right, it makes the work a lot more fun and kind of easier to go through. All it takes is just patience. You just need a good amount of patience until you get everything looking right as it should be. So I turn all this off. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So now starting off this project, I kind of used um, a a material a material from um, from Substance Painter. 